Hello, dear polymer clay enthusiasts. I um, have prepared for you a subject which is um, still inspired by the enamel, but this time we are going to um, take as inspiration uh, um, enamel cloisonné, and um, this is uh, a very beautiful inspiration, I would say. Um, so, uh, for this project, um, I am working with uh, Cernit bla Black Polymer Clay, but um, uh, taking into consideration the fact that we are going to paint on the front of the um, uh, focal beads and that we are going to apply mica powder on the back, um, you can use um, any color of polymer clay, uh, including uh, scraps of clay, of course. So um, I have uh, conditioned the clay and I passed it through the pasta machine, through the um, largest, thickest setting of my pasta machine. Uh, and then um, uh, I applied um, the first sheet of polymer clay on top of uh, another sheet of polymer clay to have uh, a double length, I would say. Uh, I used my craft knife to poke out the air trapped inside the polymer clay. And uh, I used a rigid blade, a rigid blade to cut around um, a nice shape. shape. Uh, the initial idea was to make um, uh, focal beads, round, um, square, uh, hexagonal, but then um, <laughs> I would say that the project evolved, I, I've changed my mind, and um, this was in fact uh, due to the fact that um, um, the um, uh, the gold building foils were not um, very compatible with the polymer clay, so I had a wonderful experience with the silver gilding uh, foils, but they were a different brand. And then when I uh, I started working with this uh, golden. Uh, gilding foils, uh, it was a terrible disaster. But since I, um, I didn't have another um, type of gold foil to work with, I had to stick with these ones. But let's say they, they were not the best fit for, for polymer clay. They, they were beautiful, they were gold and everything, and I, I'm sure they work well for other types of projects, but they are not the best fit for polymer clay. So um, uh, I would recommend you to, to buy um, um, higher quality of gilding foils um, if you want to make sure they, they work well with polymer clay. So um, um, I have prepared, uh, as you have seen, um, a doubled um, thickness, a uh, double layer of polymer clay, but then when I flipped it, when I flipped my um, um, polymer clay sheet, I noticed that the bag wasn't nice, so I had to put the, the polymer clay into the pasta machine again, um, through the thickest, thickest um, setting, and um, uh, then I uh, stretched a little bit the clay and I folded it in half, so I would have, again, a double layer, a double thickness. And I will use um, cutters to cut um, focals, but as I said, the project uh, will evolve and uh, 
will be slightly <laughs> or uh, uh, will um, uh, it, it will uh, suffer significant um, alterations. But I think this is uh, um, uh, this is the main component of the creative process. You have to be flexible. You have to allow. Um, the polymer clay to surprise you and to accept the fact that you had an idea, you have you had uh, an image in your mind and this uh, image might not translate into the um, look of the finished piece but this is okay. Um, flexibility is key uh, to being creative I think. So. Um, as always, um, uh, when I um, bake my uh, pieces uh, only one time, if this is possible, uh, I start with um, the um, texturing of the back. So I start with um, working on the back of the piece. So um, I have uh, put my kappa powder using my fingers. Uh, directly on the texture plate and I'm working with a Lisa Pavelka silicone texture plate and um, um, I um, removed some of the excess mica powder by flipping the texture plate and tapping a little bit with my fingers and I put uh, you can put uh, uh, paper uh, um, or um, I don't know, baby wipe underneath to catch the extra powder. Um, it wasn't difficult to clean the silicone uh, texture plate. Uh, I just cleaned it with uh, uh, warm water and um, um, hand washing soap. Uh, and I, I, I used um, uh, a brush to do this, but it wasn't a very difficult thing to 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 clean my uh, texture plate um, after uh, using it with um, uh, mica powder, and then I pressed uh, the texture plate into the clay because I wanted to have um, mica uh, inside the pattern, inside the design. And at a later stage uh, of the project, we will cover um, the entire uh, back of the piece. Uh, we will cover with mica powder even the areas that for the moment are still um, black polymer clay, I would say are still black. And this is because I wanted to have a very nice uh, um, for gold edge effect um, on the back of the pieces. So you have a partially finished back. I'm flipping the polymer clay sheet and I will use um, several cutters to cut uh, to cut out shape but because of the fact that um, the gilding gold foils that I used were not such a good um, fit for the polymer clay uh, I had to discard some of the, these pieces because the, uh, the result wasn't um, what I hoped it would be and uh, finally I had to make uh, a larger vocal and do my best to use these gold foils and this technique. I think that uh, if, you, if you use a better quality of gilding foils uh, or of course the um, uh, metallic foils that are made to be used with polymer clay that are less in quantity but better quality than those I am using in this tutorial. Um, it will be easier to, to do this technique 
um, with, uh, as I said, uh, um, better gilding foils. But I stick to the gold foils I had and I managed to have a good result, but I had to work harder, I would say. That's all right. The, the end result um, was um, okay. I was happy with the end result of the project, so um, it was the effort, I would say. So I kept this part of the, 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 the tutorial of the video, even, even though I'm not going to use uh, um, these cutout um, pieces, because I wanted to show you that really I am very flexible in my design and that um, I start with an idea, but the idea is only a starting point. It's uh, something that gets me going and then um, uh, the project will evolve and uh, I accept this idea that uh, the project will evolve into sometimes into something uh, very different from what I had in mind but it's okay. So uh, as I said I had to um, make a, a larger focal so uh, I had to prepare another piece of uh, polymer clay. I'm using the scrap clay. And then uh, I fold it in half to have a double layer, a double uh, width. And I applied the mica on top of the same um, Lisa Pavelka texture plate. And I used uh, the texture plate to imprint this design uh, into polymer clay. And this is going to be the back um, of the um, larger focal bead. Don't forget to, uh, to remove the extra mica before applying your texture plate uh, onto the polymer clay. I'm using a roller to roll the... Um, to have a better impression into the polymer clay and I'm using also my hands and I'm pressing firmly on the texture plate to, to have a very nice design. Then I flip I uh, flip the polymer clay sheet and I'm using a larger stencil that has already <laughs> some um, gold leaf inside because I, I, I used it to um, uh, to make the pattern, the gold pattern on, on the um, focal, hexagonal, hexagon focal that you can see in the image and that will not be present in the final design because I don't know, it, it didn't fit. Um, I was very happy with the result of this technique and it is an interesting technique but I, um, I wanted to tell you that you don't really want to use your best stencils, your most expensive stencils for this technique because it is a little bit hard to clean the stencils after using the, um, uh, the gilding foils. Uh, you ha if you have glue underneath, the, the foil will glue all over the back of the stencils. So. Um, um, I uh, uh, strongly encourage you to use uh, really cheap stencils with this technique so you won't be terribly sad if uh, you won't be able to clean them very well. Um, you might want to consider uh, using um, uh, some 
I don't know, um, uh, plastic and uh, or or a cardboard, and you might use your craft knife to cut a shape into a plastic foil or cardboard, and use this as a stencil so you can discard it after using it with with uh, with a foil. So um, I pressed the, the foil into the stencil, trying to have it uh, uh, stick, stuck to, to the polymer clay. But uh, as I said, uh, this kind of gilding foil wasn't really compatible with the polymer clay. I had a hard time to make it stick. And then, uh, using uh, your fingers, you should try to remove um, uh, as much as you can uh, of the polymer clay that sits on the stencil and keep only the polymer clay that is um, stuck to the polymer uh, and keep only the foil that is stuck to the polymer clay. Of course, um, um, you should um, save the foil scraps and use them for other projects. So um, uh, I try to take off um, as much as I can the foil that sits on top of the um, stencil so uh, it will be easier to remove the stencil and in case I remove some of the polymer clay from the pattern I use uh, scrap foil, no, in case I uh, remove some of the foil from the pattern um, I'm using scrap foil to fill in <laughs> the pattern. Then um, you should be very careful when you lift off the stencil and in case you have um, foil that um, is partly taken off uh, you just uh, use your fingers to press the foils back into the um, polymer clay. And I think I, I, I had a, a nice design. And then uh, using a flexible blade, I'm cutting a free form shape for the largest, larger focal. And then I put um, the focal aside and I'm using the scrap clay passed again through the thickest setting of the pasta machine and then fold it in half and then I will um, wrap um, slices, thin slices, I don't know, 2-3 mm millimeter wide slices of polymer clay, I will wrap them uh, in um, gold foil, gold gilding foil and then I will use these stripes to decorate uh, all around the focal bead. Normally with the silver higher quality gilding uh, foil I would just apply the foil on top of the polymer clay and then cut the stripes which is easier to do. But the problem with this gold gilding foil was that it wouldn't want to stick to the polymer clay. And uh, so uh, I had to go for, uh, for a harder <laughs> way of um, achieving the um, um, golden foil stripes. So I had to cut the, 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 the stripes first and then um, wrap them um, 
into golden foil and you'll see um, very quickly um, how I did this. And this uh, is part of the adapting um, uh, while um, trying to have uh, um, a desired result uh, when working with polymark laser. Sometimes what you had in mind would not work uh, uh, as smoothly as uh, uh, you would have wanted to, to work, so you have to adapt a little bit and try to find the best solution to take you to the result you have in mind. My, com my camera decided to turn off while I was uh, filming uh, the part when I uh, attached the stripe to, to, the, to the focal. But uh, don't worry, um, I will um, show you how to do this when we'll make uh, uh, a, a smaller focal together um, after finishing uh, this um, uh, larger focal bead. So after applying uh, the stripes all around the bead, um, I used uh, again mica, gold mica powder, to cover up, to cover up um, parts of polymer clay that would show up in the final piece, and um, I uh, used mica to color the back of the stripes and to color entirely uh, the back of the bead. So um, I decided to start with um, uh, with the part uh, when I textured the, um, the polymer clay using the colored uh, textured plate because I wanted to have mica inside the pattern and then at this stage I would apply mica uh, all over the design to have a full gold edge. Um, look on the back of the piece. Next I'm using Kato poly clay and um, small eye screwing pins and they will help me um, put, the de put the design together um, in the final form. I am using um, Kato polyclay to make sure that uh, the screwed pins are going to stay inside the polymer clay and after baking the pieces and in the final step of the design I will also add a little bit of uh, weld bond uh, again to make sure that um, these uh, eye screw pins um, are really stuck uh, inside the um, focal beads. Now I am working on the smaller bead and I have, um, as you can see, I have finished uh, uh, Um, a, a square bead and now I am working on the second square bead that is part of the final 
design. So you'll have um, an idea of uh, how it's going to look, how this square bit is going to look, to look like. <clears throat> so again, um, I used a, a smaller stencil and a gold gilding foil. I applied the foil onto the stencil. I used um, um, a, a piece of paper to press the foil uh, onto the um, stencil, and I used this to make sure that. Uh, it would, if I used directly my hand to, to do this, um, the foil might have stuck to my hand, so uh, it's better to use a piece of paper and uh, press the foil into the stencil, and then uh, you can use your fingers to press it even better into the polymer clay. And then using your craft knife, you have to take out all the silver, uh, all the gold foil that um, sits on top of the stencil that, that is not part of the design. So it will be easier to lift off the stencil from the piece. It um, uh, lowers the risk of having your foil uh, tearing up because of the fact that you have uh, larger uh, pieces of foil and the stencil would have to cut through. Again, if you have um, pieces of foil that are um, not stuck to the polymer clay you can use your finger to press them into polymer clay and if you are if you consider that there are parts of the design that you would want to uh, work a little bit on that uh, are i would say missing uh, you can use scrap clay to redefine the design and to complete the parts where the silver uh, or where the gold foil um, um, is missing. I used uh, a small round cutter to make a hole. And then using a double layer uh, polymer clay sheet, I'm cutting um, stripes of polymer clay, two, three millimeter wide stripes of polymer clay that I will use and that I will wrap in uh, gold foil and I will use them to uh, decorate all around the bead. So normally if you have um, uh, a foil that is compatible with, with polymer clay, uh, you should put the foil on top of the polymer clay sheet and then use your rigid blade and, and cut um, th this kind of uh, stripes and uh, as I said um, with the silver foils the, this worked perfectly and I could cut them and I hope that you have a better uh, quality of uh, foils and that you will not encounter the um, small difficulties that I encountered encountered with um, these gold files.
if you have uh, small parts where the polymer clay is still showing off uh, you you you'll only have to take uh, scraps of uh, foils and um, put them on top of these areas then using the craft knife uh, you'll have to trim a little bit the edges so um, uh, I wrapped the um, stripe into polymer clay and I uh, made sure that I would have um, uh, the area that is showing on top and that is uh, um, uh, covered with the gold foil and also the the side that is visible is also covered in polymer clay uh, while the bottom of the stripe uh, is not covered but this part is going to be colored with uh, golden mica powder so um, it's all right and the inside is it's all right okay because we are not seeing the inside part of the stripe this is where uh, we will apply a little bit of uh, Kato polyclay to make sure that the stripe um, will stuck to the base of the um, of the focal bead so don't forget to use Kato poly clay to glue the stripes to the base of the bead Keep in mind that you will have a slightly, you will need a slightly larger stripe because uh, you will need some extra length to decorate the interior part of the bead, the round part which is in the middle of the bead. And these um, stripes together with the um, uh, gold foil pattern um, are going to give the faux enamel cloisonné look to, to the finished piece. So as I said, I'm using a, a small part of the stripe and Kato polyclay. to decorate the inside of the bead um, the round cutout area of the bead So I pressed it inside and also I pressed it against the side, the side. And then uh, using some gold mica power I'm trying to color any black polymer clay showing through. Then I would flip the piece over and I would use mica to color uh, the bottom of the stripes and the whole back of the piece.
and also the, um, the stripe that I used to decorate the center part of the bead. This is how I wanted to put the design together initially, but then I changed my mind again. So uh, this is the perfect time to decide how you are going to put together the design, how you are going to attach the pieces together, and then according to um, the way you want them to sit around your neck, uh, you will have to decide where you put the, the eye um, screw pins uh, using a little bit of uh, Kato polyclay to have them really stuck inside the polymer clay. I forgot to tell you that uh, in order to clean your stances you will need uh, some warm water and uh, hand washing soap and uh, it's better to use your fingers and your fingernails than a brush because uh, um, there's a risk of damaging your uh, stances if you are using a brush so it's better to do it gently using your fingers and in some cases your fingernails so again um, try not to use your best stencils and very expensive stencils for um, this technique as you can see it's very easy to mount the eye screw pins into the polymer clay pieces you just have to screw it inside all the way and as I said it's better to use uh, Kato poly clay to have them glued to the polymer clay piece and as an extra um, measure of um, uh, as an extra measure to make sure they will really stuck inside they will really stick to the polymer clay um, I will add some uh, weld bond adhesive um, that dries clearly And I think um, these pins uh, are really going to uh, stay inside the polymer clay. I, I won't have to worry about them. So this is how I wanted initially to put the pieces together but then um, after baking the pieces I decided that I would prefer them hanging um, um, in, the manner, in the manner that I finally uh, attached them together. Now it's time to color the pieces and I'm using um, Fimo liquid and uh, uh, very light 
eye shadows that contain mica powders. And I will use this uh, mixed paste to color a beautiful design on top of the polymer clay pieces. So I'm using a brush, a brush that uh, uh, I might not be able to clean very well after using it with the Fimo liquid, but this is, this is okay with me because I'm not using expensive brushes, so if I, had, if I have to discard some, it's okay. So uh, I, I'm using um, green, blue, and I will be using also a little bit of uh, pink and purple. And I'm using uh, this kind of eyeshadows because these colors are very, very light and they, are, um, uh, they have mica inside. So uh, they are a little bit sparkling. And I liked uh, these light colors very much. And I, I, I thought they, they would be a good fit for uh, uh, um, cloisonne, uh, uh, an enamel cloisonne inspired design. So my camera decided to um, shut off completely and uh, um, I don't know, I had some problems. I, I could not um, continue to film with my camera, so I had to use my phone. So I continued with the coloring part. And I uh, put, I poured, um, some uh, liquid clay and then I mixed it with uh, the color of my choice and then I used this paste to to color um, parts of the beads and as an advice um, I would say that uh, in some areas you might want to leave small small parts of the black polymer clay to show through if you want uh, more contrast on your piece. For me I really liked um, the look of, of the pieces with a um, little bit of black showing through. So I'm using a color on all the pieces that I want to, to color because um, if I would mix again the colors, they might not have the same uh, uh, shade because of the, I don't know, the amounts that you are using. So it's better to use a color on all the pieces that you want to, to, to paint and thus you you make sure that you will have consistent um, shades of color on all your pieces if you want this uh, result of course you can use more you can mix more the colors which i didn't but um, i think it's not a bad idea to mix the colors You can mix the colors and then apply them, apply them on, uh, on your pieces.
and I have added a little bit of pink mixture <laughs> to have really soft pastel colors um, on the finished piece. You can add um, little bits of gold foils in places where you think uh, there is not enough. And you just press them into the um, colored paste. It's very easy to do this. You just take the small bits and press them uh, um, into the um, color paste that you obtained mixing uh, Fimo liquid and um, eyeshadows. when you consider that you are done with the coloring, the painting part of the beads, now it's time to put your pieces into the oven at the temperature recommended by the polymer clay uh, manufacturer. And I would say uh, you should uh, put them in the oven for 45 minutes and this if you're not working with Cernit. But for me, as I am working with Cernit, I, I am going to leave them in the oven for only 30 minutes. And the baking process will fix also um, these uh, painted um, uh, details into your um, polymer clay beads. So as an idea, it's uh, better to prepare the pieces and color them on top of the um, tile on which you are going to bake them. And as you can see, I've put uh, some paper underneath my bead, not to bake them directly on the tile, uh, because um, I uh, don't want a glossy look on the back of the pieces, because uh, um, this is the final uh, uh, step. I'm not going to bake them and put some uh, textured uh, uh, clay and then bake them again. So I'm very careful to have a very nice bake after uh, baking the pieces. I allowed for the pieces to cool down and then I used the diamond, uh, diamond glaze to have a very nice glass-like uh, effect um, on the front of the beads. So I poured a little bit too much, I would say, uh, diamond glaze on top of the focal bead. And then I used a brush to distribute the glaze all over the bead. As I said, I think I put a little bit too much. You have to be very careful to take out any air bubble that uh, you can notice um, 
inside the glaze. So if you notice that you have air bubbles, uh, you just uh, use your brush and take them to the side, push them gently to the side of the bead. You can use the extra glaze to varnish the sides of the beads. And uh, for uh, this project, I um, would recommend that you apply two layers of uh, varnish, of transparent varnish, on the sides, all around the bead, and on the back as well. And thus, uh, you, you, you are making sure that uh, your polymer clay pieces are very well um, protected. You can apply uh, small bits of uh, foils to decorate your pieces. So you take uh, small bits of foil and then you press them into the diamond glaze. And you can use silver foil as well for a very nice effect. So um, I have waited for the diamond glaze to dry. Um, I don't know how much it would normally take because I've uh, glazed them in the evening and then I continued the project the following morning and uh, it's not mentioned on the bottle. Um, how many hours you have to wait so I cannot be very precise and then as I said I applied um, two layers of um, transparent varnish and when applying the second layer and I waited for the first one to dry and then I applied the second layer and when applying the second layer, if you have small areas where the black polymer clay uh, would show through, you can mix some uh, transparent varnish and mica powders and make a golden um, paste and um, add a little bit on these areas. So. Um, you'll have a very uh, nice looking piece. And then I applied a small bit of uh, well bond adhesive um, to glue the ice cream pins to, to, the, to the polymer clay pieces. So I'm showing you again the colors that I used to color these focal beads and uh, while my camera was off I uh, added um, uh, a small acrylic rhinestone in the middle of the piece and I added it um, uh, while I was uh, putting on the dimensional the um, diamond glaze meaning after having baked the pieces because the acryl would melt in the oven but it's safe to put it afterwards, it's okay. And I also used the small um, crystal, small crystals that are normally used for um, nail art. And I pressed them into the diamond glaze while I was applying the diamond glaze to add a little bit of sparkle to, to the pieces. But this part is totally optional, it's up to you if you want uh, this um, 
additional elements of design or if they are a little bit too much for uh, these four enamel cloisonne pieces. Then I'm using oval jump rings to attach the pieces together. So I open the jump ring sideways. I, I put the pieces inside and then I closed it and I'm making sure that it is very well closed. And then I'm using a, a chain, a gold color chain with a lobster clasp to finish the design. And this is how it looks, how the finish, finished necklace looks back and uh, front. I hope you liked this tutorial. I hope you will uh, use these techniques and this inspiration to make beautiful four enamel cloisonne pieces that um, would express um, your vision and that would translate um, your color combinations and uh, your favorite uh, shapes for jewelry pieces. Please subscribe to learnpolymerclay.com um, and please uh, join our beautiful community of polymer clay lovers uh, in the Polymer Clay Adventure 2017. Thank you and stay tuned for more inspiration for your work with uh, polymer clay.